Hey, Mara. Hi. <laughs> we are earlier on live today. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Good, good, good. So today's topic is sex and money and yeah. simply money. And simply and money. Okay. And simply money. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that um, yesterday on your wall, one of our co uh, uh, co coaches, yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, Paige Royal, she uh, she said she's excited to hear this and uh, that she's wondering how the both are related, sex and money, how they are related. And I don't know, we just decided to talk about it and let's see where it takes us. Uh, Sure. If they are really related or not, what do you think? Are they related in any way? Or yeah, I, uh, for me personally, I've had personal experiences where um, they go very well together. <laughs> or actually, uh, being for me personally, being really highly in touch with my own sexual energy. Where, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about sex and money being a type of energy. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm really like enjoying my sexual energy um it directly relates to how i'm experiencing the money in my life oh okay mm -hmm. i have actually done <laughs> um i was raising money for a film i was producing uh -huh. and i wanted to um we needed an extra six grand or something like that mm -hmm. um i forget exactly how much the amount was at that particular moment in our raising of it but I had just um, earned some money from working, working with someone and um, I had cash for that particular session. And I was like, uh, um, ooh, you know, money coming in, the energy of money coming into you, being given to you for work that people appreciate. I wanna raise or attract, bring that energy closer to me mm -hmm. and, um, I had just taken a workshop on making money your lover, <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. which I can talk a little bit more about, but I was inspired to uh, lay the cash out all over my um, bed <laughs> and just get naked. And I just roll, I rolled around in the money mm -hmm. and I, I took sexy photos of myself and um, post, get, showed it to some friends to sh like sh push the energy outwards and I just sort of um, felt a, a, alivened, which is what I mm -hmm. think really good sex does for us is like aliven mm -hmm. us and make us feel abundant. We, feel, uh -huh. we don't really feel like we need so much after we've had some, had a really good sexual right. experience. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I, I love what you're saying. It suddenly just uh, feels so congruent uh, to me as well and, and resonates in uh, many ways. Uh, how I have experienced the both uh, in my own life, but yeah, go on, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, anyway, so I did that. I felt really good about it. Um, I shared the experience also with a boyfriend of mine at the time, and he was a part of that film. So I said, you know, let's create, let's co-create, you know, merge. Our, we both want more money to come into this project. So let's you know, let's have sex, <laughs> make the baby grow. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, we wrote, we raised uh, the six grand that we needed in a very short amount of time after I played with the money and, and like making love to it mm. in that way. Um, and then we raised even more. We raised more than we needed and were able to um, get more done for the film than I thought we could. But I was in this place of, I, I actually had negative money in my account because um, mm -hmm. I had to, something went wrong with some of the equipment on the film and I had to pay something off. And so I was, or at least the fund we had for the movie, I mean, the, the account we had for the movie was in a negative balance. <laughs> and I was, that was part of what fueled the let me make love to this um, so it can feel loved and grow. And it, and it, that's how it, that's one instance where it has worked for me very clearly together. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. 
yeah. Uh, who was the boss uh, in, because you said both you and your boyfriend. Um, ah, I was the boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the way how you describe it, it was, uh, at least in uh, from my perspective, it, uh, it's uh, a rather feminine way to feel the money, feel into the money, uh, yeah. relationship with the money. Yeah. Uh, and do, do you also, because I do, do you also feel that um, women have a different type of relationship with the money, if you can even uh, formulate it that way, than men or the same? Um, I think it can, we can look at that as in a very generalized way. There's a yeah. sort of societal, you know, money is a goal for men versus it's an experience for women. But I don't think that's the rule. I think uh, money can be very much a goal for many women and um, very much a, a beautiful experience for many men um, mm -hmm. and anyone anywhere in between, you know, however, whatever gender anyone identifies as. Um, but that goes back to that sense of masculinity and femininity being energy states. And exactly, yeah, not 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 really the, you know, the how your body is formed. You know, yeah, you have female body parts or male body yeah. parts, and in, uh, in, in on an energetic level, yeah, yeah. But culturally, um, it's considered, or, or at least it it. A, a, a large part of many societies and cultures view money as this sort of masculine driven goal you know we have to reach x number and um it's sort of driven in that way of like um uh, competition and um tell like, me about it yeah. <laughs> i even i even got an mba degree <laughs> Going out and hunting and uh, making your kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's nothing to, wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, just, to, just to realize that uh, later on that uh, you can also feel it uh, in a, into it in a different way. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, this making love to money story that you just shared with us is actually very similar to what uh, happened in my life. Uh, when I, I grew up, of course, uh, um, it, I wouldn't. I never felt that I uh, grew up in poverty mm -hmm. because I felt like I had it, like everything was enough. My parents uh, loved us and ensured everything that uh, we needed. Although now, on the hindsight, when I look back, it was really we didn't have much. Uh, the way we lived but uh, it didn't feel that way so but I, I remember that my mother always worried about money oh, will we have enough till the end of the month and mm -hmm. stuff like that and I think you know that got planted in my um, brain and my mind and so I was thinking okay when I grow up I will you know do something so that I have a lot of money there was like money was one of my goals yeah and, and then I met, met um, a guy who later be became my first husband and he was very um also um basically alpha male <laughs> and, and uh, focused on the money and he got really successful uh and made a lot of money in a very short t time because that's that's when the Soviet Union fell apart, and uh, finally we were able to um, to um, to you know have our own businesses. Because in socialism it was not permitted. Uh, so, but I, I also had that mindset. And uh, however, um, our relationship fell apart. We were really young as well, and um, yeah, but um, that made me blame the money yeah. i really had the mindset on uh, the money is the cause the root of all evil because i i was thinking because we were so focused and spe especially he was so uh, focused on the money i thought you know that okay that why we didn't last as a couple was because of the money mm -hmm. the focus on the money so there was a period of time in my life where i was uh, 
seeking for men who didn't have money ah. <laughs> purposefully <laughs> that's great <laughs> and then I married one who really didn't have money but somehow living with me he also got um, started his own business and got fairly successful so we again we uh, never were like really without I was never really uh, without money however um in all those relationships, also in the current relationship with my husband, uh, I, uh, I feel supported mm -hmm. by my male partner. And that gives me that security and freedom to experiment in my own business. Yeah. So I have to acknowledge that, that uh, mm -hmm. my, um, the way how I go out in the world and, uh, and do business and act, it's, it's really, um, it's creative. I do it because I like it. Yeah. It's yeah. not because I want to earn a certain amount of money. I really enjoy everything that I do. All the businesses work that I have done and started, uh, it's been because uh, I like what I did. I felt that that is uh, where my gifts were and how I could uh, help people, my customers, and really enjoy the process and grow. And at the same time, I always felt supported. I didn't like, yeah, I, like, I knew that if, if something happens, I would, I would not be, you know, sleeping under the bridge. Right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I have to acknowledge that I, uh, that men in my life, they have had different energy. They have probably focused more on the money just as such to support yeah. family. Absolutely. And, uh, and I was more like making love to money making a lot of money yeah but there was also one particular um um turning point in my life where i i was in that you know uh place where i was looking for actually somebody who didn't have money uh but um there, there yeah I, I don't know at what point it was but i read an article in a, in a magazine a women magazine about this what you just described the um the ritual um, there had to be full moon and then you do you know some ritual with the money and basically you treat the money as um some something that you love or somebody that you love yeah and you know magically it totally changed the situation in my life like I totally got more abundant just magically yeah I, just, I don't yeah. know this sense of Omar, I'm losing you. Oh, okay. Am I back? Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, I was going to say when you talked about being supported in this way by uh, the men and the money that they brought in, mm -hmm. that was definitely something I learned. Uh, one, through that uh, workshop, I talked about making money your lover but then really exploring that concept and um, seeing what it meant for my life. And one of the things I, I learned for myself on my own money journey was that I was not trusting money itself. I did not feel that money could support me, money itself, not attached to anything else. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I had to make that switch for myself to yeah. say, I want to admire your power as if I was talking to a lover. Yeah. Uh, I want to admire that you, your power to support me and make me feel safe, make me feel protected, make me feel loved, um, yeah. give me pleasurable experiences. But a lot yeah. of it had to do with that support and protection. I totally and agree. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. Once I really like, um, communicated actually spoke as out loud as if speaking to someone this is what I want this is what I'm now trusting you with because I know that you're my perfect lover <laughs> uh it's it, that began my journey of really being able to feel good in my relationship with money yeah nice um you know this this has been loud we started with money just money itself yeah. Um, how about um, sex and money? Okay. So um, when you say sex and money, tell me 
do you want to explore the sense of how the energies help each other or like getting paid for sex or um using sexuality to earn money what any any or all of that but really what i, I already shared with you in a text message uh about what what just came into my mind just instantly as i was thinking uh how we would approach this was uh that old <laughs> movie that you unfortunately haven't seen as it turns out but, but i understand why <laughs> <laughs> i i saw it when i was like in my early 20s and that was already it wasn't new at that time <laughs> uh nine and a half weeks um it was um it seemed at the time when i saw it um uh, it seemed very very erotic but also upsetting at the time and there's a money scene in that movie and i saw i don't know how it happened i i read actually on internet just now that it was edited out but i did see the movie with that scene in it mm -hmm. and the the actors were kim basinger and mickey rourke and uh, so the character uh, of mickey rourke uh, made the kim basinger's character to crawl and he was throwing the money on the floor and he wanted her to pick the money up. Yeah. And um, Kim Basinger uh, is a very attractive, beautiful woman with, you know, a very fluid movements. And when she crawls, just those several, not, not many, those movements as she crawls, she does look like a uh, black cougar so beautiful like a cat mm -hmm. uh, and then she gets very upset and starts crying and um throws things you know i just money throws at uh, her partner and i was thinking uh you know when we play those games in our relationships sexual relationships uh we'll play roles maybe what would happen if he simply asked her to crawl uh, would would that have the same effect? Because, like for instance, my my husband sometimes when we just you know joke around and play around, and he would say say this in Russian, and he you know <laughs> thinks it's erotic and stuff like that, you know. Um, and uh, I do that, and it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, so if if she just crawled without the money, would it be the the same thing and why when money in, in, is introduced why does it upset her what do you think mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts or maybe you don't well just based, i would have to actually see the whole movie to yeah, understand their yeah. specific relationship yeah but, um it's because uh, uh, what i imagine the movie wants to explore uh, just based on your description of her getting upset when he throws the money is this sense of um, women's cheapening women's power mm -hmm. um, or that character may not have known not known how to handle the the sensations she was feeling um, that's a very when we do dominance and submission play um, if whenever anyone wants to engage in that if you are new to it and you don't fully understand the energies it's a lot of sensation it's about feeling a sensation in the body and so it can be overwhelming um, yeah. and you can lose your sense of what is my agency in this situation i think either way whether you're the dominant or the submissive depending on how comfortable you are in the role yeah you can start to lose your sense of self in those situations um and when money is introduced uh, particularly a man to a woman and at the time um back in the early 80s i presume the movie was I think, uh, late 80s yeah late 80s okay um that was a time in our society too when women were really striving to walk as equals month mm -hmm. you know there was a real surge for women to walk as equals with men in the business world and yes mm -hmm. had to go through a lot of very demeaning situations um where who they were as people was demeaned completely so um i i feels like the movie was exploring 
what is power and and how is how can it be demeaned and um so she likely started crying one if she was actually turned on it sexually that can be confusing when you're in a situation that um feels demeaning or like it takes your power away from you so that was maybe part of it and then him throwing the money at her um is a further way for him to say i own you you know mm -hmm. i'm the one here with the power because i have so much i don't actually need you i don't need you i can just throw money at you and make you do whatever i want mm -hmm. it feels like it became more of his game than her game yeah um i i completely agree but i like how you uh uh, formulated it. it it was specifically uh for that character that because um a different character could just play along you know mm -hmm. and yeah <laughs> i am uh, being a slut in this role and yeah. that's fine for me because this is just a role but for her it was it meant a lot more mm -hmm. yeah so um why do you think it got edited out then um now, I'm very curious. I would want to read read more into it, but it was likely at the time it was released, um, it was if there was more of a negative reaction to it from test audiences, you know, people, uh, yeah, people whether male or female getting upset at the scene or or feeling too challenged by examining male female dynamics in that way, it can yeah. be really confronting the first time a culture really has to see some ugliness that it's it's doing mm -hmm. to each other um they likely edited it out so they could sell more tickets <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so so this is what happens like uh when we coach um we can go somewhere where we cannot go publicly right and mm -hmm. <laughs> talk about things <laughs> yeah so yeah, that was wonderful. You, you, yeah, you, you mentioned also other relationships. Okay, sex for money. Um, do you want to comment on that or no? Or because I don't want to ask you for your opinion. It's more like throwing out some ideas for consideration because we don't, yeah, <laughs> need to to state <laughs> what exactly we are thinking about <laughs> A specific. Um, yeah, again, it's a. Uh... These things are so personal, sex and money. So, and when they're combined, there's even more charge. Cause it's, um, I had heard it put once, our need to receive sex is related to our need to feel loved. Whereas our need to receive money is related to um, our need to know we're worthy to even be alive, you know, because money essentially keeps yeah. us alive in, in so, most yeah. of the world. Supports our yeah, no, yeah. in modern world definitely. Yeah. If you show if you show the money <laughs> to uh, maybe a tribe that is um, you know lives in jungles and is not yeah. civilized and um, and I don't know in, in some way communicate that its energy maybe they will burn it and it will really create some <laughs> thermal energy. <laughs> But yeah. at least in, uh, yeah, in societies where money runs the show, uh, that is very true. That mm -hmm. um, without money, you do feel like you're going to die, mm -hmm. um, and die very alone and cold in a you know in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you combine this, am I worthy to have to be provided for to live, coupled with am I worthy to receive love? Um, it's a very, as we talk about pushing edges, the very edgy place to walk. And um, so when there's sort of unconscious behavior in both of those places, which there's a lot of unconscious behavior in the world um, around the value of both money and sex and your own power, your own power as a person. Um, so, sex workers or uh, there's there's terms you know called being a whore you can be a whore to a whore to money basically you, you don't have to be a sex worker to be given that derogatory term right you, know, just, you can just be yeah. doing work you don't enjoy just mm -hmm. to receive the money yes. um, mm -hmm. so there's the sense of like um 
un unconsciousness around it, uh, of people not understanding their own power, their own self-worth, their own absolute divine right to be loved is the, in the way they want to be loved. And that's where it can get um, scary and dangerous for people and harm can be caused versus you can receive money for sex and have a beautiful, amazing experience because you know who you are, you know why you're there, you feel abundant and you're enjoying it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And um, also it, I do believe also that it does a lot of good to some people who um, aren't, I don't want to mention kind of like go into specific ideas where what it can be, but it can be helpful for uh, to those people who are receiving the service as well. Not okay. just, not just uh, uh, in the way that they are exercising their power, but actually really helpful. Uh, I, I do believe in that. Yeah, yes, I agree with you completely. Thanks for bringing that up. Yes, um, it's absolutely can be when done consciously yeah. beneficial to all parties involved. Yeah, so can we say that our uh, culture is uh, maybe um, could be <laughs> challenged? Uh, and what I mean is that uh, when we look at um, how these things are brought up um, regarding politi politicians, political candidates, if they have, you know, had um, any events that come, you know, um, get to, you know, known, you know. Um, so it's basically uh, portrayed in a negative light. My, my personal opinion is that it shouldn't be portrayed at all. Uh, mm -hmm. that it's a very private thing and very personal thing that we are not doing good to anybody uh, when uh, invading somebody's personal space. But uh, yeah, uh, well, what, where do you stand there? Or if you don't want to share, that's fine. Um, I think, again, the, the way in which it's being portrayed in media um, sort of is just showing us our, like, how we're viewing the act it's sort of you know who we who a culture raises into fame and notoriety and uh, gives so much attention to is just a mirror of the culture itself exactly yeah um, and so um we want to when we're searching for ugliness you know that's what the culture is looking for yeah. so there, of course there's something to be said for the individual the individuals themselves if they are operating in a way that's causing harm to those they're um, paying money to or, or having come have sex with them for various reasons. If there's harm being caused there, yes, that's something to be uncovered and looked at and, and brought it to attention. But when it is more of the mutual play and the society decides we're gonna search for ugliness like a sex scandal, um, yeah. That just means there's there's a unconsciousness and illness in the society around sex. Yeah, thank you, thank you for for verbalizing that because I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we stop here because I think this this was the nice conclusion. Or do you have anything else that you would like to bring up? No, I think this is a good stopping place. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so should we uh, should we announce what we are talking about tomorrow? Um. I think it'll be a surprise tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you suggested uh, previously uh, that we could uh, talk about uh, art and uh, our art or, but uh, yeah, should we be a surprise or sh should it be we art? May, yeah, I say we may talk about art or maybe it'll be a surprise. Let's leave And it. maybe more than art. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much it was yeah. fun talking to you thank again you. and see you tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow at 11 again yeah <laughs> <laughs> bye